It's 6.30. Let's begin. Mr. Crosby. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of the council, we have uh, several items I'd like to discuss with you this evening, but uh, oh, it's an update of an emergency basis, so which is not on here. I'd like to call on Chief Corn to kind of give you a brief happening of what happened last night and mm -hmm. where we are today. And my, uh, my last night's just kind of ran into this evening. Um, mm -hmm was kind of kind of odd I think everybody if they watched any local weather before uh, you went to sleep last night kind of looked like we were going to experience some typical thunderstorms that we get for our area this time of year it's kind of the second spring and the first part of September but uh, around 11 o'clock we were experiencing a lot of electrical uh, activity a lot of lightning well that accompanied a what we believe was a downburst um, in the area between third to about seventh from the alley north of cedar to about walnut even to queensboro we had some damage that really was the result of what would have been straight line winds but we weren't experiencing that at the time we had some large mature trees in that part of the neighborhood and we lost several um, we had several buildings that their roofs were compromised so we spent most of the morning, once the sun came up, uh, starting to do damage assessment, really figure out uh, what had been affected, what businesses were affected. And we got most of that done today, along with doing inspections on all our city property. So we're not quite done with that. We'll go through the process now, compiling all that information for our city facilities, see what kind of damage we have, what water damage we had. Several buildings had leaks. So I'm sure in the future you'll see some some cost associated with some repairs but uh, that was kind of the events um, it was over by about uh, four o'clock in the morning and uh, we'll get ready for round two which is supposed to come in about the same tonight um, we're hoping it stays a little bit further south but it's developing northwest around woodward right now and we'll be tracking our way so any questions I was asking Mr. Crosby earlier, do we have almost all the power back on, do you know? Most of the power is. Uh, og &E right now is replacing some poles that were not broken, but um, with all the rain, and we got about six inches of rain last night, the ground saturation, it takes very little wind then to move objects. So we had a lot of power poles that were leaning. Uh, they were on North Ranch Wood just off of 66. They're along Kimball and Charlemagne Apartments, and they were replacing three poles there uh, before the meeting. Okay. Were there any physical injuries? No, we did not. Uh, we did have uh, a couple of residents that lost some personal property where trees had fallen onto vehicles in their homes, but nobody was injured. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so you much. Bet. I know you've been busy. Yeah. So we appreciate you and hope you get a good night's sleep tonight. Thank you. And I might inform the council on that there's one tree that is by a creek it is, uh, we've looked at it it's a huge tree the lady said it's over 200 years old but she was pretty young so I didn't know if she's been in when she planted it but, uh, the access to get in there is very difficult it has a lot of power lines there's a patio the sprinkler systems things in her backyard it's very steep embankment going down there where the tree is and uh, I've directed staff to get a hold of companies like Arbor Master and things that do that for a living and have the equipment better than us because uh, normally on something like that to remove a tree and the trunk and stuff that's that large you bring a crane in and stuff to lift it mm -hmm. uh, there's no way a crane mm -hmm. can get back there in my opinion but they may find another way of doing that and uh, but that'll be coming to you in the next two to four weeks and they can't get back there until it dries out anyway because it'd be too much damage to the property so this is something we're addressing and uh, we will pick up the limbs that are sitting out there by the curb that you people have in this area and uh, get that taken care of thank okay. you any questions all right moving forward uh, we have an item on the agenda uh, Daniel Decker has brought forward a uh, proposal because this is our 25th anniversary of Christmas in the Park. And there, she and Tammy are always looking for something different and upbeat to do. And we've talked about this in the past, having an ice skating rink. Well, uh, 
she contacted the individual that does this and uh, he has a proposal and it's on your agenda tonight to come forward to do and uh, we have met with him and talked about how to set up and what we could do uh, he pays for all the setup he pays for the, the staff to operate it and uh, the charges and then uh, we can audit of course anything he does and uh, the uh, I think he gets ninety something thousand dollars of the first belong to him for operation to cover his cost, set up equipment, everything, and after that uh, we get a percentage of the profit. Uh, the last year in checking on one of the places he operated, uh, he made about about sixty percent more than that. So it kind of gives you the kind of deal. But it, again, it's not a cost to the city, which is something that we do furnish the electrical and water and other than that uh, he's there and so uh, this is something we're looking at doing and it's on your agenda this evening you just kind of want to like tell you where it came from and a little bit about the history and in, in regard to that I think that's a wonderful thing and the idea that downtown has such a draw that'll be a real draw to Yukon and something well, great for our big citizens. draw wherever it's been and uh, mm -hmm. we're looking I think it'd be a very exciting time for us mm -hmm. and something uh, really nice to add. Um, talking about our capital projects, uh, we keep getting questions around Frisco Road, but the uh, mobilization on Frisco uh, Road will be on start September the 8th. From my understanding, they'll be moving forward in about a, about a week, 10 days after that, they will actually start construction on that. Um, Vandement will be shut down going south. I mean, not Vandement, but Frisco at Vandement will be shut down. And uh, it'll also be shut, closed at 10th Street. And they'll be working with Oklahoma City on a detour route for those individuals that are there. And uh, hopefully a project will move rather quickly. And it's a pretty good company. And we uh, state will be operating this and doing the inspections. Uh, um, some of the dirt that will come and uh, on the fill on the north side will be coming across some uh, property that uh, off abandonment and we'll be working with these individuals to make sure they don't damage our street or replace that section that they drive across with those dirt trucks because mm -hmm. we want to protect our property and yeah. make sure that that's clear. Those of you that go out Highway 4 can see the status of that project is moving forward rather quickly and uh, going great uh, we're very pleased with that they've uh, trimmed uh, some of the dirt work they brought in on the north and they're getting ready to uh, to do some more paving up there and, and get that ready the bridge they poured concrete you've been out and uh, that project is ahead of schedule and moving forward rather quickly uh, on highway 4 on phase two, uh, there is an item for discussion this evening on that. But right now, we've, uh, as of today, we've got all of our easements but one. And that is the gentleman we'll be talking about. Uh, just because this evening, uh, we can still move forward on this. Uh, we, Judge Miller, discussed this with him today. And uh, allegedly, we think we're very close to an agreement. He, with a minor change, but we'll see on the easement description, but we'll see how that goes forward. If you look at 11th Street, uh, the paving is finished. Uh, we'll have to go and readdress the uh, little side where they fix the the side part with the, after they've done the paving because we had some washout with this big rain we had, and uh, we'll come back and get that fixed, but. The problem you get on that is now that it's fixed, uh, people drive pretty fast. And uh, we hope people will keep that in mind that there is a speed limit out there. And, uh, you know, once you get some of these roads, that you don't think, I can't drive 20 miles an hour on it, and then you fix it and they're going 50. So it's wide open. Uh, like I say, there's no houses really in the area. And uh, people drive the speed they think is safe for conditions. And uh, we need to remind them this area is, is something that we have to watch and you know keep it down um, the uh, 
other projects we have going. We have some minor drainage projects we're going. <coughs> we have one on uh, Meadow Run um, where there was a blockage in the drainage channel. That was cut out today to make sure there's no repeat of those people having some flooding in their uh, garages and also in their storm shelters. Uh, we had some over by the high school that has been corrected today. And uh, if you have a big rain tonight, that will certainly assist that area in, in moving forward. Um, but our capital projects, like I say, they uh, right now they're going quite well. Uh, we still have one main bill coming in on Frisco Road. Uh, we think that will be submitted to us in the next 10 days, and we'll bring that to the council in our next meeting for payment. And uh, once we kind of tie some of that up, we'll be able to come back to the council and talk about how much money is left in the accounts and if you have other projects that uh, can go forward. The uh, gentleman was going to start on the, uh, the drainage project on 11th Street, but I think uh, that's going to have to be put off for a little bit so that water you know, succeeds and he can get in there and start work on it. Other than that, Madam Mayor, we're doing quite good, and I'd be answering any questions you all might have. Anyone have any questions? <coughs> okay. I have a question for this stuff. Oh, uh -huh. On the fire, can we discuss that? The fire truck? Okay, I'll be glad to discuss that. Uh, What's the hat? Chief was going to be here this evening to talk about it, but what happened? This truck has been in the uh, shop for a number of days, about two to three weeks. Uh, once they really started working on it, they discovered it had other problems. Uh, the estimated repair cost, you all have the bid with you, is $34,335.05. Uh, and the chief has stated it's their frontline engine response out of station one. And we rely on our reserve engine. And uh, it's a 1994 model, and it's age and mileage. It's not intended to be used for the first, first response. They could start work immediately on this and be complete in approximately 10 days. However, it's not on the agenda. Therefore, I told him I would bring it to the council. We could not put it in their new business because it, it's not new. It's, up, it's already been in the shop for a while, and mm -hmm. we hopefully if they worked on it, it would come up. It might have been a surprise to us today, but uh, in talking with the city clerk, he felt it would be inappropriate to put on new business. So the council, if it does not have an agenda, I mean a problem, I will direct the people to go ahead and start work on engine one. We will have to bring it back in two weeks for your approval. So you need to be knowing what's coming forward. And uh, I don't like surprises. I know the council doesn't either. Right. And uh, you would not want to me to do that without uh, your knowledge. If you have any, anybody has any objection to it, we'll just wait two weeks, bring it to your attention, and then uh, it'll take another 10 days or so after that to get the engine fixed and back online. I think we ought to get it fixed right away since uh, that's our, uh, out of, you know, frontline engine response. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask, uh, can't we, uh, for a backup, uh, rent one out of Oklahoma City? Would they be able to rent us uh, one of the trucks for about 10 days until we get ours up? If we have a contract uh, agreement with Oklahoma City and several cities, yes, they would come out here right now. If we really need it, we would put our first our second engine online, but if we need more, they will respond to it and help us and they have in the past, and we help them. And uh, So we don't rent it, it, it just comes out in response. But, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we do have an agreement, an yeah. inter intergovernment agreement, and uh, they will take care of it, sir. All right, thank you. Eric, did you have a comment? No, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I think we need to be in agreement, though. That I hate to see it go to the shop and then it could be defeated. I feel right. Yeah, I feel very good about going ahead and putting it in the shop. Okay. Yeah, I, we've got to do it. Yeah, both. Yeah. But right, yeah. right. But I'm just saying, I'd like to know everybody's kind of on the same page. Yeah, it's something's okay. got to be fixed. So yeah. And it's going to be fixed one way or the other. Right. Yeah. Uh, like Jeff, there, are you I on? Chief to be here for the meeting, but he, I didn't know it was going to be discussed during the right. study session. But I thought you'd have the memo so you could read it prior okay. to the time that we discussed it. With that, Madam Mayor, that's all I have this evening. Okay. Seeing that, then we'll adjourn. We'll come back in 15 minutes. Have a break. Mm.